All right. Hey, I'm really excited. This is part two of my 1111 series. Now, you know, yesterday was November 11th, so it was 1111. And uh, after 11 o'clock at night, I began this thing. So it was 11, 11, 11. So today is 1112. And, you know, I really wanted to do it all on 1111 because I thought it'd be cool, but I didn't finish until after midnight last night. I went ahead and uploaded it. I was reading Psalm 111.1, and I just read Psalm 111.2, which would be 11.2. So that's 11.12, okay, which would be November 12th. And this is what I read. This listen. The works of the Lord are great, sought out of all those that have pleasure therein. Now just listen to that. That is amazing. That you know, the whole idea of this one 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 is I'm claiming that this is like a wake up call. It's a new beginning for, you know, everyone. And yet right here it says the works of the Lord. So if the one 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 one, this synchronicity, this this drawing of the universe, some people say, you know what I mean? This there's a power source behind this because it's very obvious that people are seeing this. And I believe really that at times even God's angels are emphasizing this and trying to wake people up to the reality of it. But listen, the works of the Lord. So if if it's true that the 1111 is a work of the Lord, it says <clears throat> they are great. Not just good, but great. And they are sought out. Meaning that people are seeking, sought out among all. So my friend, the question is, are you seeking these things out? You know, <clears throat> Deuteronomy 29, 29 says the secret things belong to the Lord our God, but that which has been revealed belongs to us and to our children that we might do all the words of this law. My friend, think about that, that there's certain things that God has never revealed, but what he has revealed belongs to you. So this is something that belongs to you. He, he loves these mysteries. And again, I said in uh, part one that coincidence is simply God's way of remaining anonymous. And I mean, you think about Jesus, you know, on earth. God was remaining anonymous, but his name means Emmanuel, God with us. So, you know, uh, Thomas, when he reached his finger into his hands and into his side, he said, my Lord and my God. So the Bible says how God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. So that's one of God's coincidences, one of God's, you know, secrets. And uh, anyways, the mystery of the Trinity is the most amazing thing. But my friend, there's three in one. So <laughs> anyway, it's pretty cool. All right. So here you go. Uh, the works of the Lord are great, sought out of all them that have pleasure. So do you have pleasure in the works of God and are you seeking them out? That's the question. Okay. So part one was pretty much just the Old Testament. And I did share about, I started the very first 11-11 uh, was Genesis 11-11. And that was a birthing. Okay. And it's used twice. Okay. So there is a law of biblical usage and that is the law of first use. The first time it's used is Genesis 11, 11, the first time possibly it could have happened because there, <laughs> chapter 11, verse 11, it's the first time. And it's a double reference of, of birth. So I believe that that is a first picture of what 1111 is. It's a birthing. It's a new beginning. It's a new start. Okay. So in the book of Revelation, which is the last book of the Bible, it would have to be then very significant record. So I will be sharing that in a moment, okay? Uh, but so now I'm going into the New Testament, okay? So again, part one would have been the Old Testament. I shared uh, some pretty cool things, I think. There was some amazing scriptures. And now listen to this. So the start of the New Testament is Matthew 11:11, 11, 11, the first time 11:11 11, 11 could have occurred again, the law of first usage. And it's those in God's kingdom will shine greater than John the Baptist. So the emphasis is those in God's kingdom. So 1111 is awakening or a new birth or a new beginning to have you be in God's kingdom. Jesus said, unless you were born again, you can't even see the kingdom of God unless you become like a little child. So it's a birthing into God's kingdom. That's what I believe 1111 is. It's an awakening into God's kingdom. All right. So then now listen to this. Matthew 1111 states that Jesus looked 
at everything in Jerusalem and in the temple. Okay, now if you remember Job 11:11, when I did the Old Testament, it was a verse. In fact, I'm gonna, I'll just, I'll read it because I still have my notes. Okay, it says, "For he knows perfectly." All the faults and sins of mankind, he sees all sin without searching. So God, without searching, sees the, the sins and the faults of all mankind. Okay. Now, remember, Jesus, in uh, uh, Mark 11, 11, he looked at everything that was in Jerusalem and everything in the temple. I think that's very, very significant. And uh, the Bible even says... They're talking about the eyes of him with whom we have to do, talking about Jesus, who is the, the one who searches what are the intentions and motives of the heart, that no creation is not, you know, open to the eyes of his gaze. I mean, so anyways, that's incredible itself. Okay, now watch this. So Luke 11.11 11 is a record of a, Jesus talking about a father, and it says, a good father is not going to give a stone if the son asks for bread. He's not going to give a snake if the son asks for fish. And he's not going to give a scorpion if the son asks for an egg. Meaning that God is not going to give a counterfeit for the truth. And that's one thing. See, 11.11, Satan knows it's a wake-up call. Satan knows it's a new birthing into God's kingdom. Satan knows the power and significance and the drawing power. The Bible says no one comes to Christ unless the Holy Spirit draws him. So 11.11, angels are literally waking people up to see that as a new beginning, as a new start, in birthed into God's kingdom. And so Satan, knowing that, he has to come up with a counterfeit. So he is the one that gives a stone instead of bread. He's the one that gives a snake instead of fish. He's the one that gives a scorpion instead of an egg. But Jesus said that he's given us power over all the power of the enemy to tread on scorpions and snakes. And if you remember, when Jesus was being tempted, he tried to get Jesus to turn stone into bread, which is exactly opposite. Isn't that interesting? Okay. But <clears throat> Jesus said, you fathers being evil know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more shall the heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those that ask him? So it's a, the giving of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, you know, um, is given that we might freely know the things that are given to us of God. Uh, Satan, the Bible calls him the God of this world, it says he has blinded the minds of those who do not believe, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ should shine unto them. Okay, um, It's interesting, that is 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. The number 4 has always been a number for the world. 4.4 4 is the world doubled. Okay, So here you have the God of this world blinding the minds of those who do not believe. 4.4.4 uh, 4, 4, 4 is very significant. It was um, on the road to Damascus. The word Damascus is actually 4.4.4 4, 4, 4 in uh, Gematria, where every number, uh, excuse me, every letter represents a number. I'll go into that later. But 888 is Jesus, 999 is judgment, you know, 555 is grace, 666 is man's number. That means the triple of sixes is not good because that's man claiming to be deity or the Trinity, or man as God, okay? Very important. 777 is God's number. Uh, if you just look up in the sky, there's a big uh, seven backwards. So if you were in heaven looking on earth, there's a big seven floating up in the sky. And, I mean, you just, you know, take a look. I mean, you'll see it if you have your eyes open. Anyways, so uh, back to 111. Okay, so Luke 11.11 11, Jesus is basically saying that the Holy Spirit is the one that opens the eyes, and yet, you know, uh, 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says Satan is one that closes the eyes, okay? Now, a friend of mine had a dream, and in the dream, he was cut into 444 pieces. I know that sounds crazy, but um, what it was was he was a gift to the world, his life and his ministry, that, that some aspect of his life would be given broken apart as bread to all the nations of the world. So that was his dream. He was cut into 444 pieces and his life, his ministry was given to the world, okay? And that's literally what's happened in his life. His ministry is amazing. Anyways, so now that you see a little bit of a gematria, a little bit of a new, new, not numerology, but numerics, God's Everything God has done, Satan has a counterfeit. So God does numerics, Satan does numerology. 
God does astronomy. Satan does astrology, okay? So Satan always has a counterfeit, okay? So um, God uses like gematria where you can count the number of the beast for it is the number of a man. His number is 666, but it's not something that, you know, meaning that numerology is something that Satan has taken over because he knows the truth that it originally came from biblical numerics and he just stole it. So you need to be aware of that. See, there are powers out there, but power can be used for good or evil, for right or wrong. God says, I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. He says, choose life that both you and your children might live. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life no man comes to the Father except by me. So, anyways, these are very clear. Okay, so let's go to Acts 11.11. 11. Now, you have to understand that Acts is uh, the very first call of the Gentiles. There's no record of a Gentile coming to faith in Jesus Christ, okay, after the resurrection, and the very first time is Acts 11.11. 11. Well, this is when Peter was given a vision, okay, and a net what came down from the four corners of the earth. Remember, I said four is like the number for the world. The four corners, that's the world, okay? You know, there's four elements, you know, fire, water, you know what I mean? You know what they are. I don't know what they are, but, uh, you know, uh, anyways. Uh, and uh, in this vision, it happened three times. Again, the number three is the number of heaven, okay? Three, three, three is, you know, call upon me and I will answer you. It's Jeremiah 33. If you always wonder why you see uh, 333, it's because Jeremiah 33, 3 says, call upon me and I will answer you and I will show you things to come. Again, I will open up your eyes. I will show you. I will reveal to you things to come. That's what God's trying to do with this 1111. He's trying to reveal to you, open up your eyes. When he was with... Uh, uh, Peter, Jesus said, who do men say that I am? And Peter said, thou art the, um, well, he said, uh, some say you're uh, Elias, some say you're John the Baptist, but Jesus said, who do you say that I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, blessed are you, uh, Simon Barjona, blessed are you, Peter, uh, for that Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. See, he called on, you know, call upon me, and I will answer you, and I will show you things that you do not understand. So 1111 is you misunderstanding in the New Age movement that the angels of God are trying to wake you up to the truth of the Scripture. The angels of God are trying to wake you up to the truth of Jesus Christ. The angels are trying to wake you up to a new beginning, a new start, and entering into Christ's kingdom and not receiving a counterfeit, but receiving the truth. And the truth, my friend, will set you free. John 17, 17, again, a double reference, is sanctify them. Jesus said, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And my friend, he is truth. He is reality. He said, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man spoke like this. You know, you walk up to your neighbor, knock on your door, say, hey, man, I want to talk to you. And he says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Jesus Christ discluded the entire human race uh, coming to God except through him. Now, my friend, either he is the way, the truth, and the life, or he is a deceiver, a liar, and a counterfeit. But my friend, I'm just telling you right now, he said one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. So I personally think since Psalm 2 says, kiss the son, lest he be angry and you depart from the way, okay, this is, I mean, how could a Jewish person not see Jesus in the Old Testament when the Bible says, kiss the son? Jesus is the son of God. Uh, Ecclesiastes um, you know, uh, very clearly has revelations of the Lord. Job has revelations of the Lord. Um, Chronicles has revelations of the Lord. Genesis has revelations of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Psalms has revelations of the Lord Jesus Christ. Isaiah has revelations of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jeremiah has revelations of the Lord Jesus Christ. Micah has revelations of the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, in every, every single place in the Old Testament has revelations of Jesus Christ to open up the eyes of anyone who has eyes to see. Uh, Micah 5 2. But you, Bethlehem, though you're just a little city among all the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth whose beginnings have been from of old, from everlasting. My friend, were your beginnings from of old, from everlasting? You know what I mean? Uh, you will not allow your Holy One to see corruption. That's a, a verse about Jesus Christ rising from the dead. Um, Daniel chapter 9 uh, verse 25 talks about 
that Messiah will be cut off, yet not for himself. If you're cut off, it means you die. It's the, it's the timing of the death of Jesus Christ. And it gives the countdown. And if you count from the time of the rebuilding of, of uh, the temple all the way to the time of Jesus Christ, it's the exact number to the day that, that Daniel 9.25 said the exact day Jesus Christ would be crucified. Now, how do you do that, my friend, unless you know the end from the beginning, unless every hair on your head is counted and numbered, and, and you know everything in all the entire universe. You know all the sins of mankind. You know everything in Jerusalem. You know everything in the temple. You know everything going on at all times throughout all history. I'm just telling you, my friend, wake up. This is reality. This is the wake-up call. This is God trying to get a hold of you, saying it's not just New Age. It's not just the universe calling you. It is God calling you to wake you up, to get you involved in His kingdom, to get the Gentiles to come to Jesus Christ. Acts 11.11, back to the New Testament, is the very first call of the Gentiles coming to Jesus Christ. So as soon as Peter has this vision, okay, of these animals coming down in a net, three times he got it, okay, and then uh, he, uh, this voice said, kill and eat. And Peter said, I have never killed anything unclean and I've never eaten anything unclean. He was Jewish. He was kosher, okay. But um, God said, what I have cleansed, do not call uncommon or unclean. So God was saying, I am cleaning the Gentiles. I am presenting them be through the blood of Jesus Christ, through my son and through his sacrificial death, that the gospel is being opened up to every single man, woman, child, boy and girl from every tribe, every nation and every tongue, and that all would be available to confess Jesus Christ. Okay, so now Romans 11, 11 actually says that through Israel, Rejecting Jesus Christ, this was the great mystery, okay, remember the secret things belong to the Lord our God, but that which belongs to us belongs to our children, that which has been revealed belongs to our children, belongs to us and to our children, it belongs, I'm trying to give you the emphasis, this belongs to you, Jesus Christ is drawing you by his spirit to salvation in him, and in him is found life and hope and strength and goodness and joy and peace and power and fellowship and friendship and eternity and salvation and wholeness and freedom. My friend, grab a hold, okay? So Romans 11, 11, through Israel rejecting Jesus, the Gentiles are given the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That's awesome. Now listen to this. 1 Corinthians 11, 11, 11, 11 okay, is the mystery of of marriage, the, the unity of marriage, okay? The two shall be one. There's a double reference right there uh, with a one. Um, Paul's love for the church is revealed in 2 Corinthians 11, 11. He says, he says that, you know, I love you so much and God knows the love that I have for you. That's amazing right there. Now, I'm going to end with this, and this is what I want you to hear so clearly. Revelation 11, 11. Remember, we started with Genesis 11, 11. And Genesis 11.11 11 was a new beginning. It was birth. Birth is a new start of life. It is a new start of hope. It is a new start of, of an opportunity. It's a first breath, okay? It is your first breath is your birth. It's, it's you've begotten. You, 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 you've begotten into a new realm, a new revelation, a new understanding, okay? And, you know... Um, the Bible says the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you might know the hope of his calling and the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Now, my friend, this started, and I have about five or six other videos on this, but this started, I'm sitting reading my Bible. I'm reading about 1111, and all of a sudden, a light comes through the window shines through a glass sitting up on top of something and in a rainbow a number four is on my bible okay <laughs> i mean that happened i mean i actually took a picture of it i actually used to have a picture of it i i probably erased it accidentally but i kept it for a long time and people did see it okay but a number four in rainbow form, you know, was on there. And it's funny, sometimes my cat gets behind me and it sits in the same place where that, that uh, glass was. Her name's Rainbow. And uh, anyways, while I'm doing my video, sometimes you'll see my cat sitting up there. And that's when the light came through, hit the glass, and landed on my Bible as a number four. Anyways, so the eyes of your understanding. Now listen, the four ones are like also eyes. An eye and a one are both standing up, okay? Now watch this. God gave me a revelation, and it was that I had a dream. In the dream, 
I had glasses on, okay? And there was a little metal hook at the end of the glasses, and then there were little glasses in front, okay? So there's four glasses. When I looked straight through the regular glasses and I looked up, um, I just saw a mountain in front of me, okay? Just looked like a regular mountain. When I looked up further and I lined up the two glasses with the other two bigger ones and I put that inside the frame reference, so I was seeing through four eyes, okay, four eyes, four ones, four eyes, okay, and I looked up, I could see a city, a, a city on top of the mountain. So when I looked through the two glasses, I only saw the top of a mountain. When I looked through four of them, I could see the city on top of the mountain. Here's the revelation. The Bible talks about Abraham. It says that he saw a city whose builder and maker was God. He was given a revelation clearer than other people saw. When he saw, you know, um, remember when uh, he took his son up on Mount uh, Moriah, okay, and God said to sacrifice him, right, and so when he, when he, you know, brought the, you know, the knife up to sacrifice him, the angels stopped him, okay, angels are real, angels are the ones that have you see in the 11-11 a lot of times, but they stopped him and said, and a voice spoke and said, now I know that you fear God, and uh, anyways, the Bible says that the Lord would provide a lamb, okay, well, at that moment, there was a ram caught in a thicket by his horns, and uh, when, when Abraham saw the ram, he realized that that was God's provision of sacrifice, that it wasn't a human being that was to be sacrificed. It was an innocent lamb, uh, lamb or ram, and that was a picture of substitutionary atonement that since Adam and Eve sinned, that God would provide <clears throat> an innocent lamb to clothe them. And so after they sinned, uh, the Bible says God killed a lamb and he clothed them with clothes. They tried to clothe themselves with fig leaves, but God clothed them with the, the covering of a lamb, with wool, okay? And in fact, my dog, if you heard that little jingle real quick, I just want to show you this. My dog, uh, I'm pulling her up because I want to show you this. This is what God clothed. It was like lamb skin. I don't know if you can see that, okay? So I just heard that little jingle and I just grabbed my daisy. But so God actually, when Adam and Eve sinned, they clothed themselves with fig leaves. And a friend of mine actually had a dream where someone was, um, a snake was biting them and they were throwing leaves on top of the snake. You see, we've all been bitten by the snake, my friend. And uh, we all have, you know, all of us have sinned and all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. Now, another friend of mine had a dream where this girl, she was grabbing all these leaves off of this tree. And my friend, see, there's a tree of knowledge of good and evil, okay? The fruit has already been taken by our first fathers. Taking those trees, those leaves off that tree is not going to take care of original sin. The only thing that's going to take care of the sin is a lamb, an innocent lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Well, in Revelation 13, 13, that's literally what it says, that there was a lamb. When, when John the Baptist saw Jesus, he said, Behold! the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. See, when Abraham saw the ram caught in the thicket in the bush that had thorns on it, that was a picture that one day Jesus Christ would be crucified on Mount Calvary. Well, Mount Moriah, where Abraham took his son Isaac, is Mount Calvary. So here, God is telling Abraham to go to a certain mountain. It was a three-day journey. And here, Jesus Christ is now at, on 2,000 years you know, um, actually after Abraham, it was longer than that, 4,000 years, um, Jesus Christ is on the exact same mountain, and now God is. The Bible says God did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him freely give us all things? You see, when the Holy Spirit's given, it says that we have not received the spirit of the world uh, of the spirit of bondage, again, to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father, that you might freely know the things that are given to you of God, the spirit of God is given. Remember the bread, the fish, and the egg, and how Satan gives a stone, a snake, and a scorpion? Jesus said, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall the Father give the Holy Spirit to those that ask him? You see, my friend, if you ask God to give you the Holy Spirit, to open up your eyes, to give you this new birth, to help you stand up, to help you have your eyes 
uh, the eyes of your understanding enlightened to know the hope of his calling. To see Jesus kiss the Son lest he be angry and you depart from the way. To see Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life. If you have your eyes open like Peter, where flesh and blood has not revealed this, but my Father in heaven, the secret things belong to the Lord our God, but that which has been revealed belongs to us and to our children that we might do all the words of this law. Uh, Luke, I'm trying to quote some things to you. Luke 10, 21. And that hour Jesus rejoiced and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hid these things from the wise and prudent, but you have revealed them unto babes, for so it seemed good in your sight. I'm trying to help you see, my friend, that 1111 is God giving you a wake-up call. And Revelation 1111, I'm going to end with this, is the two witnesses. There are two witnesses, my, my friend. The Bible says that if two of you shall agree, it shall be done on my Father in heaven. The Bible says where two or three are gathered in my name, um, I am there in the midst. Jesus said, I am one who bears witness, and there is another that bears witness with me. So these two witnesses are literally risen from the dead and stand on their feet. This is the revelation of two Two, 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 one, 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 eleven, eleven. It's the two witnesses doubly established that resurrection life comes to them and they stand upon their feet and they give witness to the Lord Jesus Christ. My friend, when you see eleven, eleven, it is the two witnesses standing. What are the two witnesses? The old and the new covenant about the life and times of Jesus Christ. One old covenant that gives revelations concerning every detail of his life, his death, his burial, his resurrection, and then a new covenant after the fact, after the cross, after things have taken place, you've got the two witnesses. That is 11.11, my friend. So Genesis 11.11 is a new birth, twice established, and Revelation 11.11 is the two witnesses, twice established, that you need to be raised from the dead, you need to wake up, you need to ask God to help you. Ask of me, God says in Jeremiah 33, 3, and I will show you things to come. I will, Jesus said, He will, the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he will take of mine and will reveal it to you. He will show you things to come. My friend, you need the Holy Spirit. You don't need a counterfeit. You don't need the new age counterfeit, my friend. You need the way, the truth, and the life. You need your eyes on, uh, of your understanding enlightened that you might know the hope of his calling. You need four glasses. You need four sight. You need four knowledge. You need to have, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever would believe on him should not perish but have everlasting life. God wants you in his heaven. He is drawing you. The angels are revealing to you, 11, 11. They're trying to open up your eyes. They're trying to wake you up like Lazarus woke up after four days, my friend, four days, okay, and he was risen from the dead. And, my friend, the last witness is the two witnesses that were killed, God raised him from the dead, just like Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Jesus said, unless you believe Moses and his writings, there's the first witness, how will you believe the one rose from the dead? Jesus Christ is Lord, my friend. He is seated at the right hand of God. He was risen from the dead. He is alive forevermore. He's the head of his church, and he is coming back, my friend. Will you be with him? Is your name in the Lamb's Book of Life? Will you be born again? Will you enter into God's kingdom like Matthew 11, 11? Will you stand up? Will you be a witness for Jesus Christ and stand? Because the Bible says, those...